Well, look, seeing as I've... Oh, and I need the microphone, that would be helpful. There we are. Uh, seeing as I kept you waiting this long, let's not wait for the countdown to finish. And as you can see, Dimitri is also absolutely raring to go. Look at him. He's desperate to get started. So we're going to carry on with the comprehension exercise that we were working on last time. It's just the same as last week. In other words, I haven't looked at the questions at all that we're looking at today. Uh, I've just looked at the passage and we're going to see where we go. Now the person in the comments who observed that question 11 was definitely wrong because in fact, um, what's the quotation about Freya? Um, I can't remember, but the one about uh, Freya, oh yeah, Freya's hair tumbling doesn't need to mean that it was messy, whereas it is definitely shiny. Um, I agree with the commenter there on reflection that in fact the uh, examiners simply chose the wrong answer. Uh, it just occurs to me that I haven't got the official answers ready which I need for this. I've been really well organised, haven't I? Oh well, never mind. Right, Dimitri, you can wander off and then I am going to get started. He's been very well this time. Normally he hates being on video, I think it's about his image rights, but uh, he seems very happy to be here this time. All right, Dima, off you go. You, want, you go and wander out and then we will get cracking with this week's questions. No, Grigri, you may not come in. So Dimitri goes out and then immediately Grigri tries to come in, but one way or another we get it sorted. Okay, so we have got the text over here, uh, which you'll remember from the last time. If you haven't seen this before, don't forget that there's always the worksheet linked in the video description uh, that you can download, look at it on your own screen, print out anything you like. Um, and you've also got the questions there. And I too have the questions here. And we're carrying on from, where did we get up to? We got up to question 20, didn't we? So we'll be carrying on from question 21. Okay, so let's have a go. Hello to everybody in the comments. Um, precious jewelry, do you know the values of an urban egg? Uh, okay, I think this is, uh, this is cryptic young person talk that I will not seek to understand. Let's move the microphone back a bit, that's a little bit better. Okay, which word is the pronoun in line 35? Let's go and have a look at line 35. Uh, the ugliest ogre of a giant he had ever seen when the ogre saw Loki in falcon shape. I never did decide whether it was Loki or Loki, so I just switched between the two capriciously. He grinned a sharp tooth grin. We should see what the options are. Of a he in. So let's underline those. So we got of a he and we've also got he here and in. Now, this will be utterly baffling for you unless you know what a pronoun is. And the clue is in the word pronoun. It's for a noun. It goes instead of a noun. So in other words, instead of um, the phone, I could say it. I'm holding the phone. I am holding it when, oh, I've got that flicker in the corner of the screen up here, really annoying, I need to adjust my lights, but actually I'm just gonna, okay, I'm just gonna cheat. Excuse me a moment while I cheat. Cheat, cheat, cheat. There we are, that should be gone now. Oh, not quite gone. Oh, this is very annoying. Go away. Oh, but now I'm floating above. There we are, well, that's it, that's all done. I know what I was doing wrong. Uh, okay, never mind. I'm just going to ignore it. I'm not going to try and fix it now. Um, okay. So it's something that replaces a noun. So for example, Robert is messing with his software. He is setting, is messing with his software. Uh, so of a, neither of those can be replaced by a proper noun, by a name. You couldn't see the ugliest giant, Robert, Robert, the og ugliest ogre, Robert, a giant, the ugliest ogre of Robert, giant. But you could say the ugliest ogre of a giant, Robert, had ever seen. So he is replacing a noun. In this case, case he means Loki, not Robert. Okay? So a pronoun replaces a noun. He is replacing a noun. And so the pronoun is definitely he. Good, there we are, I don't want to exit full screen, go away, pop up. What does sharp-toothed suggest about the ogre on line, 30, first of all it's lines, and secondly you say in lines, not on lines, so we're not doing well here. What does sharp-toothed su suggest about the ogre in lines 35 to 36? Friendly, hungry, aggressive, unclean. Unlikely to be friendly, 
Uh, I don't see why it would be unclean either. Having sharp teeth isn't to do with these things. Hungry and aggressive seem more likely. It's worth having that sort of pre-screening before you look at the text. We're not going to completely get rid of the other options, but it's helpful to think about it in that way. So lines 35 to 36. He grinned a sharp-toothed grin and waved. So when the ogre saw Loki in falcon shape, he grinned a sharp-toothed grin and waved. What's up with the Ezier Loki? What's the news from the elves? So we aren't given many clues. Right, so we just have to use our intuition, our judgment. Um, so a white friendly might be a wide smile. You wouldn't emphasise the sharpness of the teeth if you were trying to show the friendliness because what does the sharpness do? Sharpness is a ripping and tearing and biting into things. So I think we can get rid of friendly. Hungry. There's nothing here to suggest that the ogre wants to eat particularly. Aggressive or unclean seems irrelevant. It's clearly aggressive. The sharp teeth are being shown off to Loki to say don't mess basically. How concerned is the ogre about seeing Loki? Not at all, a little, somewhat extremely. Okay, let's have a look. <clears throat> What's up with the Ezir Loki? What's the news from the elves and why have you come along into the land of the giants? So the ogre doesn't seem very concerned. They, these seem like quite friendly, relaxed questions. Loki landed beside the ogre. There's nothing bad news, blah, blah, blah. Really said the ogre and he chuckled to himself as if he were extremely pleased with something. Okay. So, how concerned? Not at all, a little, somewhat extremely. So the ogre is chatting in a friendly way and chuckling. Um, that really, to me, suggests not at all very strongly. All the other options suggest a degree of concern. Now, I said this last time and it's really important. Don't push your own um, personality into the text too much. So yes, you would probably be concerned if some kind of god showed up making demands of you. But the fact that you would doesn't mean that this ogre is. And there's no evidence to suggest that this ogre is concerned. So yes, use your sense of what a person might do to help guide you, but don't let it define your answer. And here there is nothing to suggest any concern at all. Who is the narrator of this extract? Uh, well, there doesn't seem to be an external, and that's the rest of the worksheet, some ads. Uh, of course, do send me a piece of work for free voice and video free pack, um, but let's focus on the text. Well, this is about the gods. This is not, I did this, I did that, that I was told that. This is all about them. So the narrator, Thor, Freya, Loki, none of the above. None of those people is telling the story. It's We're very much told about them. What kind of word is himself? Why do they keep saying on line 41? It isn't on a line, it's in a line. You write something on a line when it's, you know, a dotted line, and then you can write things on it. But that's a different use of the word line. What kind of noun word is himself, what kind of word is himself in line 41? Noun, a preposition, pronoun. Okay. So line 41. Um, really, said the ogre, and he truck chuckled to himself. Okay, so what is himself doing there? Can we replace it with a name? Really, said the ogre, and he chuckled to the ogre. Well, that would seem very strange, but it does make sense. It's telling us whom he is chuckling to, whom happens to be himself. You could say he chuckled to him, that might be Loki. He chuckled to Loki, he chuckled to him. If it's about the ogre himself, then it's what we call a reflexive pronoun. It's about himself. Um, yeah. Um, you know, she washes herself, a re reflexive pronoun. Uh, so it's a pronoun like previously, it's just a different kind of pronoun. That's quite straightforward. Because we know positively that it is a pronoun, the others aren't relevant. But it isn't a noun, it isn't an adverb, and it isn't a preposition. <clears throat> preposition, you know, he went towards the haystack. Um, she is sitting on the haystack. That kind of thing. These prepositions. This isn't to do with that. It isn't describing the location or something relevant to something else. What kind of a laugh is a chuckle? See line 45. A loud one, a silent one, a fake one, a quiet one. Let's have a look. The ogre scratched his armpit. Charming. And he chuckled one. Just really charming here. Uh, and he chuckled once more. You know who loves having the armpit scratched is Dimitri. 
if I sit him on my lap and then I lean him back and I put my hands under his armpits and I go, he just sticks his arms out to the side, all the way out like that, and just leans back in ecstasy as I tickle his armpits. Um, anyway, I have no reason to believe that ogres and you are having their armpits tickled. Don't try it on an ogre without their permission. You might get the wrong kind of reaction. The ogre scratched his armpit and he chuckled once more. So, Loki says, would you know anything about that? And the ogre goes, <laughs> I might. He admitted. Then he said, I was Freya. She is beautiful, as they say. It's very posh I get this one. I don't know why. Uh, okay. So a loud one, a silent one, a fake one, a quiet one. I do not like this question at all. I think this is an absolutely terrible set of options. We've had those already. A chuckle can be loud. <laughs> That's still a chuckle. It's more likely to be quiet. <laughs> As opposed to, but it's still, you know, these are all chuckles and they could all be described as chuckles. And a chuckle can be fake. <laughs> yes, I've stolen your hammer. There's nothing you can do about it. It's not really funny, but I'm laughing to put you, to put you off balance. Um, but I would say that a chuckle does not have to be fake. And look at the wording of the question. It doesn't say what kind of laugh is this chuckle. It says what kind of laugh is a chuckle, a chuckle in general. So a chuckle in general does not need to be fake. It certainly isn't silent because it's a kind of laugh. You can hear it. Is it loud or quiet? If you're talking about chuckles in general, they are more likely to be quiet. So I'm sure the answer they want is D. But I think it's a terrible question because a chuckle can also be loud. I don't think whether or something's a chuckle is defined by whether it's loud or quiet fundamentally. And um, a chuckle in this case in the passage is probably in some ways fake. There's nothing especially funny here. Uh, it's just the ogre enjoying Loki's discomfort. Anyway, pretty sure it's supposed to be D. Why was the silence uncomfortable on in line 49? Okay. Why is the silence uncomfortable line 49? Because of the ogre's comments about Freya, because they're both shy. Uh, I, don't, I think we can rule that one out. We know that Loki isn't shy and the ogre clearly isn't either. Because the ogre doesn't want to speak to Loki, because Loki doesn't need anything from the ogre. Well, the Loki does need something from the ogre. He needs a hammer and the, the, ogre's, the ogre's got it. Um, because the ogre doesn't want to speak to Loki, maybe, but we've seen plenty of evidence for the ogre being very keen to speak to Loki and telling him lots of things and being very boastful. So I'm not sure about that. I think A is going to be most likely. Let's check it. So line 49, there was another uncomfortable silence. So the ogre says, how's Freya? Is she as beautiful as they say? Loki says, if you like that sort of thing. Oh, I do, said the ogre. I do. There was another uncomfortable silence. So the, because of the ogre's comments about Freya, that's clearly correct. I don't think we need to discuss that one too much more. Which word is the closest synonym for ransom on line 54? Gold find exchange share. Line 54. I can ransom the hammer, said Loki. I can bring you gold and amber treasures beyond counting. So, the ogre has said, I've hidden the hammer. Only I can bring it up. I will give it back to you and to Thor if you bring me what I want. So it's a swap. You give me that and I'll give you the hammer back. And Loki says, I can ransom the hammer, like how I can bring you gold and amber. So, I can gold the hammer, I can bring you gold and amber. No. I can find the hammer, I can bring you gold and amber. Well, no, it's the ogre who's willing to find the hammer. And Loki, maybe he could find the hammer, possibly, but that isn't what he's talking about here. He isn't saying, no, I can find it myself. He's saying, I'll bring you these things if you give me the hammer. So... And he's not offering to share it, he wants it back. He's offering to swap stuff. It's clearly C. What is the object of the first sentence in line 55? Okay. I don't want them, said the ogre. Sorry, don't want them, said the ogre. I want to marry Freya. I can bring you golden amber treasures beyond counting. Don't want them. Okay, don't want them. So I is implied missed out I don't want them so the object is the thing in this case that the ogre wants or doesn't want remember we spoke about this last time an object is the object is the thing that's done to 
in a sentence. And you can remember this because objects are by and large things that you use, not things that use you. So the ogre doesn't want them. And the ogre says this. So the ogre is saying and is not wanting. The thing it doesn't want is them. Okay. So what is them? So them is the pronoun here. We've spoken about pronouns a lot. And the pronoun represents, so normally when you see a pronoun, the thing it refers to will be just before. And here it is, golden amber, treasures beyond counting. They are the things that the ogre doesn't want. So, <coughs> oh, I see. Okay. So the object of the sentence is them. We're not asked what them represents. Okay. Does that make sense? I hope so. Um, let's push on. I'm trying to move quite quickly here so that we don't get bogged down in the long lesson like last time. I think this goes up to question, what does it go up to? It goes up to question 40. Great. So we can get there. We're nearly at 30. We're going to get this finished. We're going to get this finished in no time. What time are we now? We're only 20 past seven. So we're absolutely whooshing along. Who is Loki's mother? Okay. <coughs> Sorry, my flu is gone, but I've still got a bit of residual cough. Oh, it's so hot in here as well. So hot. I don't think the heating's on, but it's just these lights that I have going for these lessons, uh, which is what makes me so beautiful and shiny. I'm sure you'd agree. Um, okay. Who is Loki's mother? I can't remember this. I don't my, know my mythology well enough, so let's have a look at the text together. Uh, does it come later? Okay, so the ogre says, Why Loki, son of Lofi? I am Thrym, Lord of the Ogres. Well, Lofi, Laufi, Lofi, I'm going to say Lofi. Um, Lofi could be a father or a mother. I don't see any evidence that helps us there. Let's carry on. Um, there's nothing towards the end. Let's pop up higher to when Loki is introduced. Um, it's all about being Loki's fault. Get rid of the coat. I see nothing to tell me here. I don't think there's anything else. I think all we know is that Loki is son of Lofi. So who is Loki's mother? Well, we aren't given a none of the above, and I think we don't know from the text. But we do know that it isn't Freya. Freya is another character here. We know that it isn't Asgard. That's where he lives. What's Brisings? That doesn't look like a... That doesn't look like a woman's name or indeed a name. It looks like the name of a place. But let's try and have a look. Um, Brisings. Where can we see this word? Glittered the necklace of the Brisings made for Freya by Draw Swine Degant. So this is, the Brisings are some kind of people who have this necklace. So that isn't the answer either. So it isn't Freya, it isn't Asgard, it isn't Brisings. We do know that one of Loki's parents is called Lofri. So therefore, that's the only answer left to us. Now, a key point here. If this was a written comprehension question, if it said, who is Loki's mother and you were given a space, you would not be able to answer it. We don't know whether it's Lofri. Lofri might be Loki's father. But in a multiple choice test where you can eliminate, Lofri is one of Loki's parents. The other three options definitely aren't, so Lofri must be the answer. So you can find a certain answer in multiple choice that you could not find if it were a written answer, a write your answer in the space comprehension exercise. Okay, Tracy Zhao is keeping people entertained in the comments saying, who wants a story? What theme? That's great. That's great. Brilliant. Uh, Mega, what are you after? You are such a wondrous and charming teacher, Robert. You are such a wondrous and charming student. Thank you so much. Um, okay, legend says, good job, Robert Lomax. So, well, who am I to refuse a compliment from a legend, a literal legend? What is the name of the ogre? Oh, that's just given to us in the text, isn't it? Um, so the ogre says... Um, why, Loki, son of Lofi, I am Thrym, Lord of the Ogres. So there we are, simple enough. Thrym. Don't need to eliminate the others here because we've literally read the sentence where the ogre says, my name is Thrym. So um, <laughs> we don't have to worry about the others. Which of these statements is true? 
Loki, and the og- Loki, 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 and the ogre know each other well. <coughs> Loki knows the ogre, but the ogre doesn't know Loki. The ogre knows Loki, but Loki doesn't know the ogre. Loki and the ogre don't know each other at all. Well, the ogre recognizes Loki when he turns up. He says, "Hey, Loki." And whereas on the other hand, the ogre needs to tell Loki who he is. In fact, we have it right here. Who are you? asked Loki. And the ogre grinned and showed his crooked teeth, not his sharp teeth this time, and said, Why, well, Loki, son of Loki, I am Thrym, lord of the ogres. Um, okay, I've just got another voice now. Never mind. Um, okay. So clearly, whereas, um, let's do this properly. Um, when Loki comes flying up, so we're round about this section here, the ogre says, What's up with the Ezir, Loki? Oh, my voice is still finding out a bit strange. Um... So the ogre knows who Loki is. Loki doesn't know who the ogre is. It's fairly ob- obvious, I guess, but still, I have to prove these things to you. So the ogre knows Loki, but Loki doesn't know the ogre. I don't particularly like the question. It could be more specific. It could say which of these statements about their meeting is true. Because, of course, by the time they've been chatting, they both know each other. Um, so it really depends which bit of the text you're looking at. But I think we can infer what they're after here. Um the other options we've spoken about, and they clearly aren't correct. How should Loki try to give, try to get the hammer back? Oops, sorry, just kick that. Um, I mean, isn't this a matter of opinion? How should he try to get the hammer back? Giving the ogre gold, letting the ogre live in Thor's place, persuading Freya to marry the ogre, looking more carefully in the land of the giants. I really, really don't like should. Should is an opinion about what he ought to do. It should say, what could he do? Uh, Because you might have different opinions. Well, giving the ogre gold won't work because the ogre said, I don't want gold. We just saw that in the text. I'm not going to look back now because it's flipping to info too much. We saw that. Letting the ogre live in Thor's palace. The ogre didn't want that, I think. Persuading Freya to marry the ogre. That would work if the ogre sticks to his word. Looking more carefully in the land of the giants. That might be an alternative if um can't make the other things work. The ogre has said you won't be able to find it. Maybe the ogre is wrong. Maybe the ogre is lying. So maybe D would work. Definitely not A. I don't think B. C. Yeah. Okay. So Loki says we are looking um, here. I can ransom the hammer. Bring you these things. He says I don't want. I want to marry Freya. Uh, bring her here. So the ogre doesn't. The ogre doesn't want. It seems to whiz off and live in Asgard. The ogre wants Freya brought to him and Freya to live with him in Ogreland. Um, yes, okay, and then we don't hear anything else about this. Right, I think this is an absolutely terribly worded question because it seems to be saying Loki should hand Freya over to the ogre. And that's clearly the answer you're supposed to choose because the point is that's the only thing which the ogre that the ogre's indicated will work. Um, and the only evidence that we have that D wouldn't work is that the ogre says so. The ogre says, I've hidden it so deep beneath the earth that nobody can ever find it. I'm the only one who can bring it up. Well, we've got no reason, as I say, we've got no reason to believe he's telling the truth. The question clearly wants C, um, but actually, I think you, it would make perfect sense for you to say, I prefer option D, because that's much more sensitive to uh, the free will of Freya in this matter. They clearly won't see. Badly worded question. Which word is the proper noun on line 52? So a proper noun is a name. It might be the name of a place. It's a noun that has to take a capital letter, in other words. Um, Nouns need capital letters here are I and Odin. Only is not a name. Return is not a name. We can get rid of those straight away. Is it I or Odin? Line 52. So we are up here. Um, we've got Odin and we've got I. Well, I does need a capital letter, but that's just an orthographic convention, a spelling convention, if you like, a handwriting convention. Um, I is a pronoun. So I say, I say, I say, instead of saying Robert says. But I could say Robert says, I put I instead of my name. It's a pronoun. It goes instead of a noun. Odin 
is a name. It needs a capital letter because it's a name, like Asgard, like Freya, um, and so on. And like Easy Eleven Plus, the name of my YouTube channel. Um, so Odin is clearly the proper noun. Odin, not I. Which of these words is the closest synonym for playthings on line 62? Toys, games, sweets, friends. Okay. So a plaything is not a sweet. A sweet would be, you know, it's a sort of, it's an eat thing, not a plaything. Uh, games, toys, could be. Friends, not usually. But if someone treats people like objects and just uses them for fun, manipulates them, then you could refer to your friends as your playthings if you were, you know, a certain, uh, a somewhat sociopathic bent. So, um, not to be completely discounted. Toys, games, or friends. Let's look at line 62. In the world's, you look down the, well, it's line 63. It's not a great start, examiner. Beneath Loki, the world seemed very small. He looked down at the trees and the mountains, tiny as children's playthings. Okay, so it doesn't mean friends. <coughs> is it toys or games? Well, a game has a very broad meaning. Uh, a game might be um, a, a chess set. So it might be an object, but it might also be a game of hide and seek. A game is more an activity or the equipment for an activity. Uh, it could be large, could be small. Whereas a toy, when it's used in this way, the idea is that it's a small thing. Why? Because toys are often smaller versions of larger objects. So a toy kitchen is smaller than a, than a, a big kitchen. A toy car is smaller than a real car, and so on. So that's what this question is getting at. <coughs> the objects were small like children's toys. I'm struggling a bit with my voice now. It's this after flu cough. Anyway, let's hope I can get food to the end. I'm just going to take a moment and have a drink. Um, excuse me a second. Something warm or something cool. Ah, something warm. Something cool. Right, if the cock comes again, I will consume a strapsil. Other brands are available. How does Loki feel when he is flying? Scared, overwhelmed, free, or ecstatic? Scared, overwhelmed, free, ecstatic. Uh, Loki doesn't seem like the type to be scared or overwhelmed. That doesn't seem likely to me. Free or ecstatic seem more probable. Again, this is the pre-screening. Uh, usually you won't rule things out at this stage, but it's good to think these are my expectations. I spoke last time about hypothesis, as like, like you're doing science. So before you do an experiment, you say, what do I expect to happen? And then the experiment is testing whether your expectation is true or not. And that's an important part of doing an experiment. If you just do an experiment with no idea what you're looking for, then you don't know how to set it up. So same here. I'm, I think it's likely to be free or ecstatic, but I am prepared for something surprising like scared or overwhelmed to come up. When Loki is flying. So we aren't told we're to look at a particular point in the text. But, um, well, here. So we've got Loki flying here. So we've got Loki flying. The world seemed very small. Look down the trees and mountains, tiny things. And the problems of the gods seemed a small thing also. Okay, so when Loki is flying, the things that really worry him don't seem so worrying anymore. They seem small, like the small things on the ground. Okay. Now, Loki also flies earlier on. Let's check that quickly. He flew looking around him. We aren't told anything about how he feels up here. Uh, we're just told that he was flying and this is what he did. So it's all about the other bit that we just looked at where the problems seem small. Scared, overwhelmed, free, ecstatic. So he isn't scared, he isn't overwhelmed, quite the contrary. Now, free or ecstatic, what does ecstatic mean? If you don't know, go for free. Because we know that free is right. He feels free from his problems. So if you don't know the meaning of ecstatic, don't guess the crazy word. Guess the word that you know and that we've already proved is at least somewhat true. In fact, it's very much true. Ecstatic, though, means in a state of ecstasy. Overjoyed! Yeah, I'm so happy. This is fantastic. Flying is the best thing ever. There's no evidence for that at all. Nothing to support that. He just feels... <coughs> <coughs> he just feels free. Sorry about that. A bit disgusting, I know. Um, which of these words is the best synonym for innocence? On line, uh, in line 69. Happiness, naivety, freedom, desire. Okay. Line 69. Loki, who plotted and planned as easily as other folks breathe in and out smiled at Thor's anger and innocence. Your hammer's been stolen. So what did Thor say to make Loki react like this? Uh, Loki lands and Thor grabs him. And he says, well, you know something. I can see it in your face. 
like erect. Uh, it's, no, no, that's gay, that's bad. So it's like a suit, be suitably sinister. What does he say? He says, well, you know something, I can see it in your face. Tell me whatever you know and tell it now. I don't trust you, Loki. And I want you to know right this moment before you've had a chance to plot a plan. It's anyway, really like sort of weird, sort of wrecked Winston Churchill there, anyway, don't mind. Um, oh, and we will fight him in Asgard. No, uh, I want you to know right this moment before you've had a chance to plot and plan. Um, okay. I don't trust you, blah, blah, blah. You're plotting and planning. So Loki thinks, oh, Thor, you're so angry and you're so innocent. In other words, you don't know how the world really works. You're kind of like a baby here. You're all out of your depth. You don't really understand the depth of the mess that we're in. So happiness, no. Freedom, no, he's not free. Desire, uh, Thor isn't desiring something here. Apart from, you know, for Loki, not to mess him around. So naivety is the only word that's really left, even if you don't know what it means. Elimination, the technique that I teach, crossing things out, is amazing. Because I bet there are lots of people here who don't know what B means, but nonetheless, you can find it, and it is the correct answer. Okay, what does naivety mean? It means... Experience it. it means a kind of childlike innocence. It means thinking that things are simpler than they really are. You say, oh, you're so naive. Um, it means you don't understand the way that, you know, the adult ways of the world, that kind of thing. So it's a kind of mix of thinking things that, that things are easier than they are and being kind of childlike in your outlook. That's what naivety means. Uh, it comes from the French. Um, so that fits what Thor thinks, uh, what Loki thinks about Thor here. How does Thor feel at the end of the extract? Angry about the hammer and suspicious of Loki. So he's definitely suspicious of Loki because as we just saw, um, he says, I don't trust you. I want to know what you're up to, what plotting and planning you're doing. So he's definitely suspicious of Loki. Angry about, hang hang about the hammer and suspicious of the ogre. Well, uh, we don't know what he thinks about the ogre because we only get as far as Loki saying your hammer's been stolen. So that definitely isn't right. Angry about the ogre and suspicious of Freya. Nothing to suggest he's suspicious of Freya. Angry about Freya and suspicious of the ogre. There's nothing to suggest he's angry about Freya and he hasn't, the ogre hasn't been mentioned. So the only one that's possible is A. Um, well, let's check the text again. He's angry. We're told that Loki smiled at Thor's anger. And this is all about the hang hammer. That's why Loki was sent off. So the anger must be to do with the hammer. And he thinks that Loki will be up to something, so he's definitely suspicious of Loki. So A is a good match. We're almost there. Two more, 39 and 40. Can we get them both on the screen? Yes, we can. Which of these statements matches the end of the extract? Loki has got the hammer. Nope, he has not. The ogre doesn't know anything about the hammer. Nope. The hammer will never be found. We don't know. The ogre might give the hammer back. Maybe. So we know that the ogre said, if you give me Freya, I'll give the hammer back. And we don't know what Freya is going to do and we don't know what they're going to do. So maybe the ogre will give the hammer back. The hammer will never be found. Well, the ogre could find the hammer and Loki hasn't said I won't bring Freya. So although C seems plausible, it's less well supported than D. Because if Loki does persuade Freya to go back, then the ogre might give the hammer back. So D is definitely the only possible answer here. Who is the most powerful god in this extract? Uh, well, okay. Freya, all Freya does in this extract is hand over a cloak. So she may be powerful, but there isn't any evidence to support that particularly. Thrym is, I think, not a god. Thrym is just an ogre. Why, Loki, son of Lofi, I am Thrym, lord of the ogres. There's nothing to suggest that the ogre is a kind of god. In fact, I'm pretty certain the ogre is not. So it's Loki or Thor. Who is more powerful? Are we, are we really told? Are we really told or is this a test of our general knowledge? So, um, we go back to the top. What do we... Ah, Thor, god of thunder, mightiest of all the Ezir. And we're told that the Ezir are a group of Norse gods. So, of this group, at least the Ezir, Thor is the mightiest. Now, we aren't, I think, specifically told that Loki is a member of the Ezir, but I think it's implied. Okay, we kind of are. What's up with the Ezir, Loki? So, Oki seems to belong to this group. We're told that Thor is the mightiest of them. Therefore, 
actually, it's given to us really straightforwardly. This is a funny question. It seems to be asking us to reach lots of clever inferences based on the whole passage. But in fact, the reason it's tricky is because it's asking us to remember the very first line of the text by the time we got all the way through to question 40. And that's why it's quite cunning. But because you know the text, and this is one of the big reasons for reading out loud, reading the whole text to yourself at the start, so not out loud, uh, you don't need to, uh, not in an exam. The, one of the main reasons is so that you know where things are. And we know that most of the description of what Thor is like comes at the beginning. And so that's where we look to find out how powerful he is. And there we are. Okay. Um, we've absolutely romped through those. It's 7.38. Right, because as you can tell, I'm fighting off the coughs and I don't want to knacker my voice too much. Um, I am going to call it a day there and say goodbye. So I'm not going to take questions and I'm not going to do a tip of the week this time. I hope you can forgive me. Normally I would do those things. But as for now, I'm just going to say goodbye until next Tuesday evening at six o'clock for the next Easy 11 Plus live lesson. I haven't gone through and marked my answers there, but I think most of them it was very obvious which answer they wanted. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just going to say, um, yeah, till next time. And I look forward to seeing you then. And send me a piece of work for free marking. And if you don't know about that offer, look at the link in the video description. All right, everybody. I will see you around. Um, lovely to have you here. Bye-bye. This is why I do a pause, because there's sometimes a delay. That's what you're doing.